hey, I'm Lerp, it's like played Counter-Strike for a living for eight years. I've been on the desk for some of the biggest events for five years. I know nothing about Counter-Strike, but then again, neither does Tori. Welcome to his YouTube channel. Right, this is going to be another episode of the Know It Alls of Counter-Strike with me and Tommy here, formerly known as Lerpis. Right, for this one, one thing, because it's obviously everyone's thinking about it at the moment, when this video comes out, it'll still be very relevant, is right now we are doing the last RMR for each region. Obviously, the CIS region had to have an extra one because people couldn't keep their dick in their pants or maybe their second monitor just staying, you know, on something reasonable and they kept looking up and to the left, all up and to the left, like, fucking hell. That whole thing was mental. But I still can't believe that Valve was <laughs> just like like you're all banned basically you know like somewhat mad so anyway the rmrs are going on and even in that sense right the problem is i almost get the vibe because of how many points they've stacked on these last rmrs this may as well just be the bloody minor it may as well just be like the old minor system and whoever comes top eight should just like qualify or whatever but instead they're doing this insane thing where they've literally extended the process because we've had no majors so that they still on some level count some of the points from last year's rmrs which admittedly not that many them like the points are less then you've obviously got like most regions had two rmrs cis like i say had the three rmrs i think that was oh maybe it's the other way around. maybe they had, maybe they had four and cis and three and what else no no i'm thinking of the first rmr points as the first thing i think it was two in each this year and then the other detail to add is um obviously within the rmr system this is itself a massive oversight because it was originally designed for like you know like a fucking six month span they built into it penalties if you bring any new players in except here's the problem Lerp. it's like there's been two fucking years almost like you know it's gonna be like it's, it will be almost two years when we have the major so over that span if you ever changed a player they fucking smash you in the head with a baseball bat and just take some of the points you've earned away. All you need to know is in the EU RMR, there's only one team that's in the qualification spots that hasn't got any deductions. That's just because it's mouse spots and they were so terrible last year and this year they haven't made any player changes. Every single other team has deductions and most teams, a bunch of them have two deductions. So like essentially, and the third thing, at the moment, because they made all the points for this last RMR, it means that of all the RMRs, this one's got to have a sturdy format. This one's got to have a really strong format. And essentially, we'll get into this. ESL is the one running all of them simultaneously, as I am. First of all, madness. And as far as I can tell, they're using that as an excuse. And then they've basically made it where, because it's best of ones, and everyone knows, you know this from your fucking playing days, the worst thing about best of one is what you essentially do is if anyone like goes, say you play six games, if I go for and zero i can just start playing god if you're in like the one and th three two position i can just start like losing the people that mean that you can't get out like i can literally start throwing games effectively as famously has happened many times my most famous example ever probably mtw when they just chose to go on the other side of the bracket to navi because they lost every time so then at least they were like well at least we lost in the final we got all that prize money like there's all sorts of shenanigans so let's start right at the beginning this overall rmr system right i want to get your thoughts on it because i will say just as a little bit of history for people the old systems to come to the major also had their flaws like it was mad in the early days that we literally just used like an online qualifier which luckily amazingly all the good teams just got through back then because there wasn't that many teams then we just took that legend system of like if you're top eight you get to the next major no matter what doesn't matter how bad you are you can be terrible but you get there that was okay because obviously it means the winner gets it you know there's, there's upsides and downsides but it meant that like for example you know sometimes you cut two players and by the way if one of them's like one of the best players in the world you're going to be shit next major as, as has happened then we went to the system with the legend spots but also the minor so at least the main qualifier if you didn't come top it was a LAN by the way still some very famous teams Fnatic most notably failed those NIP failed to even get to some of those so we've definitely not had it's not like I'm saying there was a perfect system before there definitely wasn't but this new approach and unfortunately obviously kicked in during the online period was the RMRs which is basically a whole bunch of qualifiers spread out and it's a point system and at the end Top X gets out. I think in Europe it's like eight or nine. In CIS it's like five or six. NA, I'm going to guess it's like fucking tat and probably like three or four. And then I don't even fucking know for Oceanic region. Look, let's everyone's tuned out of that. Let's just be real. So what do you think of this RMR system overall? Yeah, Tommy, because I will say, obviously, they couldn't necessarily go into the foresight that it would last this long online. We wouldn't have a major. It was supposed to be the ESL Rio major, obviously, at the end of last year. So, I mean, I think I've been on the record for like quite a while that I just think the RMR system is not good. Uh, I mean, like, so I just, I just looked up some of my old tweets on this. Uh, so earlier this year in the, in the, during the first RMR of this year, which was in May, uh, I said that getting seven through eight in two RMR events gets you more points uh, than winning one. 
Like, that's crazy. The first, so, that's actually so like, mental. So like, so like, first of all, like the point system is broken. That's yes. just like one fundamental issue. And like, by the by way, the way dude, that even we, reminds me, you'll, you'll appreciate this. Do you remember at the end of 2019, one of the last events fucking sucked because it was the Blast Global Finals. And here's what happened. They had Astralis and Team Liquid there. Awesome. But do you remember the other two teams they had? They had FaZe because FaZe won one. But number four, because this is exactly relevant to what you're saying, NIP didn't even get to a single Blast Final because they just went to three Blasts. They qualified instead of, you're going to like this, Ents who fucking won a Blast. Literally won one. And they didn't get a call fight. So instead, NIP went there uh, with FaZe Clan, just took their beatings, and it was always going to be Astralis versus Team Liquid. So they ruined their own global final. So I agree. That, that is mental if that's true. That like two times. Yeah. Did he say it's only two times you have to come seventh to eighth? Yeah, that's more points than winning one. Wow. Because there's another problem with this approach, by the way. Like always, you need a real expert to figure out how to distribute the points. And they've distributed the points in a way where it's like, dude, the jumps are mental. Like, sometimes, isn't it like 100, 150 points between spots? But as you say, it means if I win, I don't necessarily get a mega box or whatever. And the real issue really is the way that it's set up. I'll talk about the format in, in a broader sense then. Is really that given the fact that there's so many spots, like you said, it's like eight or nine spots for Europe, uh, you know, like five or six spots for the CIS, etc. That for the both of these regions, what eventually happens is that for the final RMR, what's going to decide who makes it in is who makes the playoffs, right? So like you either make the playoffs, in which case you're very likely to get in in Europe, or yes. you don't, in which case you're almost certainly out unless you've gotten a bunch of points earlier and you just get lucky yes. with like how the other teams place, etc. The, the problem with that is that for this format in particular, there's two teams going to playoffs per group, right? So like yes. it, what really matters is there's some, some team is going to win the group, which is assumed for simplicity, six teams per group. Some team goes five and zero. If there's two sort of next level teams who are competing for the second spot, one of them is probably going to go four and one and the following one three to two, assuming no upsets. That really means that we're doing this like massive round robin group stage and it's all going to come down to one best of one. Like if you're actually solving for top eight placings rather than the winners of the tournament, which this is not, like you can say it is, but it's not. Like nobody's going to care about the final. No, no, it doesn't matter. Like people just are not going to care about it. I'm sort of like, sorry to ruin that for anybody watching, but like you have to set up the format such that it's actually solving for those spots. So for example... Maybe what it is, is you do a Swiss system where the teams that get 3-0, like, are immediately in. Yes. And then the teams that get, like, 3-1 are immediately in. And then you do some other, like, more complicated mini tournament among the other teams that are, like, reasonably close at that point. Like, you have to solve the system so that it's actually looking, like, makes those games interesting. Like, for example, like, you know, I have a vested interest in what happens in the ENS group. Almost certainly, their tournament was decided in that overtime loss against OG. Because yes. they're most likely going to lose against Vitality, if you look at the odds, and they're yeah, yeah. going to beat uh, Sprout in the final game. In which case, like, that game already decided everything. Like, there's obviously some chance that, like, something else yeah, happens, yeah. someone gets upset, etc. But, like, that decided it, and, like, that was day two. You know, like, it's just, like, a bad system. And then, yes. going back on the broader point, like, two things. One, like, the results from six months ago are just like not relevant. That was the whole reason why people wanted to move away from the Legends format. Absolutely. People did people didn't want to lock in teams based on like what they did. Like sometimes you make playoffs winning two or three games at a major six months ago. You get into yes. the next one. Sometimes eight months eight months ago. And like that's just bullshit. Should not happen. Um, people wanted to move away from that. But then the replacement we got is RMRs where it's six months of tournaments and like fine, there's one closer to the end which has more waiting. At the same time, like that also matters. And like there eventually, if you run this long enough, there's going to be a situation where like a new super team is formed, say like think like the face team of 2017, yes, um, like the right team, before yeah. the right before the major circuit. And they're not going to be able to qualify because they didn't play the earlier tournaments. Right. Like and then the, then the other piece is this has massive impact on the rest of the ecosystem. Like, we're watching all these matches, and they're playing, like we said, they're really playing to win, like, the two games that matter, and it's a bunch of best of ones, and then we're going to waste time on the playoffs that don't matter at all, and there's going to be a couple of teams for whom those points really matter, and then there's going to be a bunch of teams who couldn't care less. Like, that's just not a good format. It's not good entertainment, and, like, during this time, by the way, we could instead have, like, a big Blast tournament. <coughs> we could have, like, a big yes. IEM tournament. Like, there could be something very interesting on the calendar that would be much more interesting for everybody to watch. Like, if this were a legitimate tournament, call it, like, 
you know, the second tournament back on LAN in like the last 18 months after Cologne, call it 250K, 300K, all the best teams are here. That's 10 times more, more interesting than an RMR. It just is. So like, I think, again, I think the broader system with like three RMRs is bad. I think you should just have single qualifier before the major. Call it, call it a day. Like maybe, there, you know, there's like some pre-qualifiers, invitations, some teams don't have to go through the online system, whatever. Just have one qualifier, call it a day, first of all. Change the format of that qualifier so that it actually optimizes for the middle placings and not just who wins, because who wins doesn't really matter. That's not how the seeding is going to work. You're not using the first seed for anything at the major. It's just not really going to matter. And then three, like... Think about the rest of the ecosystem too, because there's a lot of other things going on. And I think for the most part, people would rather watch other big tournaments where the best teams can play and where something is at stake rather than a bunch of these matches that are currently ongoing. Uh, just like you, I've got a whole bunch here. I was writing some of them down. So first of all, I definitely agree. The The number one thing, I'm going to toot my own horn here. This is what, for Flashpoint, I understood. I even explained it to Monty. I noticed he just fucked with it instantly. I said to him, think of all the tournaments you've watched in your career, Monty. The best ones, it's not just the idea of like, oh, the final was amazing and like the playoffs. The real best ones are the ones where it's like you don't just basically have an underdog win like a bullshit best of water. You don't have them like win because the like the system like it's randomized or something stupid like that. It's like if they earn it, they earn it. By the way, like a Vanguard did at the last major, they fucking earned that. Look what they went through. Like I can't complain. I can complain about the other teams losing, but I have to say props to them, right? So what you want to do in this case, like you said, is since no one really gives a fuck about winning, first of all, the prize money's nothing. Dude, you have these shitty online cops that I think are like semi-rigged. They have bigger prize purses. Like nowadays, they're like if you're giving like I think 17k for first 17.5k. There's like for the fun spark one. tournaments with that means nothing. Like, exactly. These just, just don't you know, I could even see a world they won't obviously but I could see a world where if like Gambit and Na'Vi were there it's like oh, why the fuck would I even try why should I even like show you everything here for 17k like fuck you I'm gonna play who the next up the blast the CIS teams who split prize money at some tournament earlier this year wasn't it Na'Vi and uh, it I'm not sure on like, that one so Somebody split prize money at an event because they just said oh, right. it doesn't matter. I could believe it. Right. And then the other thing is this. So obviously what you want to do here, like you say, no one really cares who comes first, second, third, fourth. That's not very important. The most important thing is who makes playoffs, who makes it because obviously how much points is. So as you say, what you want is the most sturdy group stage uh, qualification system, either like Swiss best of three, GSL best of three, as long as you seed them correctly. These are going to be modes where, like you say, put it this way, if you said the same thing, well, in the end it was only really one series a whole best of three that we lost no one get no one fucking cries about that no one sat in the corner like that's legit you played like four or five or three or four best of threes and, maybe and that's crucially, enough. crucially it in those systems you know when your decider is everybody yes. knows it's yes. the decider it's exactly. interesting to watch because you're tuning in and you know that's going to decide it now most likely the ends og game for example most likely decided that maybe it did maybe it doesn't no one's going to know Eventually, it might be some bullshit upset by some lower team that's yes. not expected to beat Vitality, who beats them anyway. And then that ends up being the swing game. But who knows? Who even knows to watch it? Nobody's expecting that to matter. Like, that yes. is just not a good way to run a tournament. Yeah, the thing I always say about the best of threes and the type that the formats that I like is you always know where you are as a viewer and a player because everyone always thinks well players most players don't even fucking look at the most of the like tiebreaker rules when they're in Bo One JS uh, round robin they don't do it they wait until the last day and then they all what they do is the one that doesn't have the head to head like oh I'd, it's head to head for this but I didn't know that until the end it's like well listen that isn't my fault but it is shit in the tournament like as you say it's pretty simple in like the systems we're talking about if you lose at the end you're out there you go it's, it's fucking really easy. Because the other thing that I always thought sucked is, I alluded to it earlier, in the CIS RMR, you have a team versus pro where, funnily enough, the guy they kicked out, Adren, is back with the Kazakhstani boys in K23. And there's a match where, because of where they are in the group stage, essentially K23 is incentivized to lose the match on purpose to potentially fuck the other guy over. You never want a team to lose on purpose. That doesn't happen in the systems we're talking about. It just doesn't. You try to win every game and that's the way it works out. So then the other detail is this. I was just looking like in the CIS one. Again, in the CIS one right it's going to be very close potentially for the last spot like it's between like you know vb k23 i can't remember if like fours is in the mix it's like a bunch of teams that are all like around the same level well because they've put so many points but they've spread them out like only top five gets points in the cis one right uh, tommy so here's how they split it up listen to how mental this is the difference between uh first and second 
is less than 200 points. The difference between second and third, less than 200 points. The difference between third and fourth, less than two. You see where I'm going here, right? What that means is I could even actually fucking win the event and the dickhead who I don't need, I'm trying to qualify against. If he comes second, he might fucking still make it through. You know what I mean? Like that, again, what a terrible system for the guys that are, imagine I'll win the event. Yeah, good win. Oh, Shit, I've just realised they're qualified anyway and this <laughs> final didn't even matter. By the way, any time you can make a final, not even objectively matter who qualifies, even if I win, you're done fucked up with the system. So, again, I don't know why those aren't spread out. Then, in Europe, by the way, where they do spread the points out, anyone who watched Flashpoint 3 knows this. Anyone who watched the Summit last year knows this. Who the fuck wants to watch a seventh place runoff game when I'm out of the tournament? Dude, uh, no one even watched those at the CPL. People even used to just throw them if they didn't know the map, didn't they? Like, who gives a fuck? Listen, you can have the 2K. I don't give a fuck about playing CPL fire. Like, no one in the universe by the way, here's another thing, and you know we've always used to say this about those single limb third place deciders. No one in the world wants to play when they've lost the tournament already. No. That's why, yeah. infamously, the fucking fourth place team realistically should win all of those because the third best team's like fuck this shit. Especially if they actually should have made the final and they didn't. They're like I don't give a flight fuck about this game. Well, and people why, are just trolling, you know. That, that's why the Golden Five roster was always found out the previous night, and then they showed up the next Course. morning, and everybody who was at the events knew they had no chance. Yes. In the they were playing against like a much worse mouse sports team or something. And then another thing is, obviously, and this is a problem right now, right? I know that players will complain no matter what because whoever isn't the one favoured complain. These rules are bullshit. That's just the way players are, get it right. But they were in a real quandary here because here's the problem, right? If you go by the seed and you should, like in the modern day, HLTV.org ranking is pretty good. Like they've actually kind of tuned it. It's pretty much how it should be. Listen, maybe they have a little bit too much lag before, but whatever. If you look, I'd say reasonably, it's pretty It's pretty much on the nose. The problem is, though, if I use that to seed this really important RMR, then what was the RMRs all about? Like in that scenario, it doesn't matter. But if I don't use that and I seed by RMR, now we're all kinds of fucked because now those RMRs are all over. So basically, you cannot seed this and make everyone happy, understandably. <laughs> I just, I honestly am confused why we went away from the format that was used, I believe, at Katowice 2020, and I think uh, the year earlier too, which was the team seed each other before the right. tournament, except themselves. That's yes. the seeding. Then you use Swiss, and then you go to then you go to single limb playoffs. Like, would I prefer double limb? Yeah, but like outside of that, I think that's the best format. I think Swiss is the best format for viewers. I think it's not particularly close. I think it's just much more interesting than like knowing every possible matchup from the beginning. I just think it's better, more entertaining product. And I think team seeding is the best way to do it. Like, like especially with the rules that ESL put in place for that event, where you discard the votes if they're like too far away from the average, et cetera. So you can't really mess with it too much. Like those were the best seeded tournaments and had the yes. best groups from that, from or the first, I guess, early round matchups because it was Swiss. But I just think that's the... That's the best way to do it. I don't know where we've gone away from that. Presumably might be valve requirement or something else. Though I think 2019 Katowice used it and that was a major. So not not 100% sure. The main problem is this, right? The most obvious system always for me is basically what they initially tried to implement in Dota, which is the Dota Pro Circuit, which would basically be a circuit of all the big events. And then it was like you got points from those events, but it's not an RMR. Like, that's just a normal event. The idea is you play it like a normal pro team. And then at the end, whoever has the points gets the qualification. Now, the problem with that, as always, is the human who has to implement it. So obviously Valve... I, I, the reason why we love game devs that stay the fuck out the game is because they stay the fuck out the game they don't know anything about these shit so they obviously will always fuck up like the point system or how what's an event and what isn't so here's the problem right on the one hand I don't want Valve to do that but then again look especially in 2021 I can't trust these bloody TOs to get together and do it we all know ESL would just find a way to skew it or some bullshit and Blast even, what's funny about Blast is Blast even went the other way I even told the Blast guy when I was working with him I know on paper you want to be kind to Flashpoint. You've given us way too many points in your system, mate. Like, Flashpoint one winner should never get... Like, he was giving as much as, like, an ESL event or something. I was like, you are aware, like, our best teams are Mad Lions in MIVR. Like, I said, dude, just because it's my league, I don't think you should do that. Like, you should sort of see where the league's at. You've actually been too generous with the points. So, basically, you can't trust any TO to help run it in that regard. And then there's the last detail, which is actually depressing if you're thinking, wow, I've got a great idea for it. Maybe someone will do it. Here's the depressing detail. You cannot allow Blast and EPT 
key to be the qualifying metrics at the biggest events because they are literally semi-franchised in a way, in the sense that you have a slot. So, for example, two of the best teams in the world, Heroic and Gambit, they're not fucking in half this shit. I think they're in the EPT, but they're not in Blast. So, famously, them and Gambit have to keep coming through the bloody stupid showdown thing, even though they're, like, way better than, like, the teams that are in the actual groups. So, already, that would make it, essentially, a rigged system that wouldn't work as a qualifier. You couldn't do those tournaments. And then in the EPT, if you're not a Louvre Agreement team, well, good luck. Again, it's not going to be great for you. Like, they're, they're going to sort of be in the catbird seat, as it were. So, I actually think, unfortunately, the ideal, which is just, let's just have a circuit, but let's just assign the points on the side and make it reasonable, you know. I would, I, listen, I'll just say it right up. Someone like me, I'm enough of a nutter, I would do it. Like, I'd give ESL Cologne, like, the most points, and I'd make Kavice second, and Blast Flight Premier thing, probably second, third after that. The problem is, every other fucker would just be, it'd all be politics. It'd be Game of Thrones, as usual, wouldn't it? So, I feel like, actually, the best ideas are off the table. Like, I can't really figure out really what we do for one what what do you what would your ideal system be do you think um i think the ideal system that's like realistic and could reasonably yes. have some chance of being implemented i think would be that you base the you effectively use the previous majors results for qualifying to a land qualifier versus having to go through some like rmr type online pre qualifier and then you just have a single qualifying event where every single team has to go but it's a single event Okay. Uh, and that saves a bunch of time. Like the worst teams have to play a bunch of online pre qualifiers, presumably, but that's fine. It doesn't take NIP, it doesn't take Navi, it doesn't take Gambit, etc. I think something like that is actually like reasonable within the realm of possible. It's not insane. It's not like impossible to implement. And I think would be a significant improvement over status quo. There's also two other angles I want to mention. One, now, every time I've ever said this in the past, it was because obviously the CIS RMR was shit because obviously Na'Vi and Gambit were already at the major every time. So all you were doing was spinning your wheels, putting a couple of teams in that all they ever did, minus QBF, was just cause the odd upset at the major because no one fucking knows how CIS played. But aside from that, you just waste two spots that could have been an IP for that, you know, whoever the fuck was better in Europe. So in the modern day, I'm sorry, we are not Riot Games. Riot Games to this day in their world slurpers pretend like every region is not entirely the same they finally gave more slots to like the Asian countries but even so it's like ridiculous that they give like four spots to China for example the best region but they still give three to NA by the way the gap between those would that would be like if in CSGO there was four European slots and then three from uh, Oceania like that would be mental mate like that's actually that can't be so basically luckily we're not that bad but even so why have we got these these RMRs still it's it's a game where you all fly to Europe and play that is Counter Strike now because ESL betrayed the NA teams with EPL and killed NA or except for DreamHack Online all it is now in Counter Strike is do you have the money in the qualification to go to Europe and play the big events so really it should just be one big qualifier exactly that's where I was going yes. I think I think that format actually would allow there to be one single global global offline qualifier by the way more interesting for fans too because you get to watch the other teams for play. sure and it's one of those events that like valve covers to travel for so everybody yes. has a chance to get there which i think is important uh, but like you said i mean look counter strike is a european game there's no reason to be in north america there's no reason to go to north america i suspect there's already been people who quit playing or went inactive or moved to valorant or whatever simply because they just didn't want to live in europe and i think it's fine i think it's too bad i think it's a shame that the North American scene was effectively just killed overnight. Um, and now if you're an EG or a Team Liquid, uh, any of those teams, like you just have to live in Europe. There's no other choice. Counter-Strike is a fully European game yes. and there's no way to be a professional Counter-Strike team if you don't spend at least like six months of the year in Europe. Now, obviously, as someone who's been involved with, I mean even before actually even when they weren't MIBI when they were SK because famously if people don't know SK wasted two real chances to win a major using motherfucking stand-ins you know what I mean like they had the one where they didn't have FNX could have won that one they were in the semis against VP they had the one where they couldn't where they couldn't use Bolt and they had to bring Phelps who they've already caught in like the harshest fashion ever and go please uh, keep playing and trying at a major like again I know you have very strong feelings about this basically because of the point system I'm saying 
in. If you do the RMR approach, you also essentially lock in rosters almost arbitrarily, even though we're not the NFL. We don't have like a preseason. You've got to have it by now. Like we have to something down. So what happens is essentially whoever's just lucky enough to GM correctly at one point in time that nobody knows, an arbitrary point, you just get to win. Meanwhile, if your complexity that's literally for different reasons had to change tons of players, if your face clan, like you actually get really, really heavily punished for this. I know you're feeling, isn't your feeling essentially like you essentially want somewhere to just make all the roster moves not matter because it kind of does fuck the, yeah. the tournament at the end. Yeah, and I mean, again, by the way, like that's why you should just have a single qualifier. You set the rosters that that qualifier and then you have like two or three weeks off between the major, the qualifier and the major such that it's like, you know, like could it happen that Convict injures his wrist and like can play between those two? Yeah, but like that's like a freak accident. Yes. But if if it's only a two-week period, three-week period, one-month period from the start of the actual qualifier to the major, like who cares? It's going to be the same roster every time and like teams are not going to be penalized. Like my favorite is still the, I think it was the, it was either the Atlanta, ma- or I guess it was the Boston major where the group stage was in Atlanta, right? That's how it was set up, the Elite yeah, I Major? Think so. I think that was right, yeah. Yeah, so that was the event <coughs> where I knew going into it, it was either 9 or 11 of the 16 teams that were in the, I guess, the real We're going to make a roster. Yeah, I remember yeah. this. They had, yes. yeah, they had already, like, locked yes. in roster changes. 9 or 11 of 16. Like, if that doesn't tell you the format is bad and the structure is bad and something needs to change, then, like, I give up. Like, at some point, you've got to deal with reality instead of what you would like the situation to be. Yes. But you just the other, yeah. The other detail on that as well for me is... Basically, that's also fucked with the rest of the circuit. So, for example, you know, everyone sits around and they go like, when's G2 going to make a change? Because they they haven't won and they've fallen off. Why would they make a change now? That doesn't make sense. They have to ride it out and just pray that they fucking turn that train wreck around and that they win the major. They have to do it. By the way, if I was someone like Nico, I'd be so depressed right now. Like, so you've got the money, Carlos. Yeah, of course. You want to win? Yeah, of course. Can I have a play? Nah, of course. Like, you got to wait till the major. You've got to fail one of the few world championships of your career in a limited window period where it's not the NHL. You're not playing like as long as Chara did or whatever the fuck, mate. Yeah. You're probably done in like two years. Oh, I'll just blow out of the world championship. Like, that's one of the things I hate about that approach is that I know that the big spenders, they're all waiting until after this major. They're even going to use the met- major, by the way, as like a metric to know if they need to make the change. So it's actually going to mean, and this is sad as fuck, if you go look at the top 10 right now, mate, this major is so scuffed, it's unreal. Like, we actually have to pray Na'Vi and Gambit are really good because otherwise, those other lineups are all over the place if you look at them. Like, dude, NIP with a guy who doesn't even look like a functional fifth player, the Liners guy, they actually are like the fifth or sixth best team right now. Fucking, the complexity lineup with three fucking lurkers actually is like not about, it's like a top 10 team. Like, these lineups are fucking really messy because... Like, you, you're sort of at the whim of the, the fact that everything goes to the major, especially because it's land, obviously, and the rest of this shit was online, right? Yep. And, I mean, look, it, part of that is obviously the fact that everything's been online. So, like, you don't you don't have, like, a real... You don't actually know how good teams are, I Absolutely. think. And I think part of the reason that teams haven't been making changes in the last year is that it's all been online. And, like, some teams have thought that, like, once they get to play offline, things yeah, yeah. will be better or whatever. Like, you know, they've talked themselves into that. Like, that's fine. But, like, it, it is true that a lot rides on Gambit and Navi being really good. Otherwise, like, it's a, just going to be a bit of a shit show. And it's also sad that the most exciting time to watch some of these tournaments is usually right after the major, not at the major. <laughs> sure. But that's when the big roster changes yeah. happen. So like that, yeah. that's when you first get to see like all the new rosters that are going to yes. happen again. Because you know there's going to be a bunch of big changes after this major. There's just like yes. no question about it. That's what always happens. So like, why not just change a system such that the j- changes happen before the major and the major is the most exciting place? It just, yes. seems, it just seems backwards to me. And I'll just throw this out there as another reason, compelling reason to have the last tournament be the qualifier. So you're counting RMR points from last year, which as far as I know, would have started when the motherfucking Krieg was still OP. Then we changed the economy. Now we've got new maps. And now we've got a a totally different fucking grenade dropping system that is already, if you watched that Alexi B game the other day, is already like radically changing the game. So what the fuck were all those points for? That's like me. Listen, I'm going to make a ridiculous example, but that is like me qualifying for the 100 metres final in the Olympics by doing the fucking, the one where it's the hurdles, the 110 metre hurdles. Now, I don't know if you know, but nobody runs those the same. Like they get, because it's slightly different, 
know, it's still a similar distance, but it's a slightly different thing. Like, or the classic example, if you're a real boomer, is WCG 2005, where they let all the Source teams lose because it was a 1.6 qualifier, and then were just like, lol, but the final's still in Source. And then I, I just always imagine <laughs> being like those NAU teams just like sat at home, like, this is actually bullshit, dude. You know what I mean? Like, it's absolute <laughs> cats. The, the funny thing is, there was actually a Finnish team that was like one of the best in Source, like Angel Dust and those guys. They yeah. Were like, at least like a top three team for like years and then yeah, they organized yeah. the finish qualifier in 1.6 and sent astrologers to just limit. get absolutely dominated at the event itself so yeah there's a problem right okay the other big topic we thought we'd talk about is ASIC, the esports integrity coalition or whatever the fuck they're called right even though like initial premise cards on the table i'm kind of like richard i do want the idea that they could be an independent body i like the idea that in theory I know this sounds weird, but the fact that they're from outside of esports, I don't even think it's necessarily a bad thing because I just think all the business people in esports are so incredibly corrupt and have so many ties going back so many years. It is Game of Thrones. You can never trust any of those people. I know even ESIC actually initially, one of the things that people were concerned about, because obviously, like, for example, our event wasn't partnered with them because one of the things is some people were even worried with how it initially was spawned. Maybe ESL secretly behind it. You know, maybe they're going to somehow power. So as usual in esports, it was hard to even get people to actually acknowledge that, like, yeah, this is a thing and we're going to buy into it then basically the few issues because i've got like one that we'll start with is my biggest issue overall is everything takes forever the investigations take forever and here's the problem i made a video the other day that was called a one year is worth more in esports where i just explain like if you know career length it's why i always said back in the day the obvious ban length for the match fixers of i by power who fixed one game to our knowledge was two years because i always said if Days, and by the way, Steel would have actually done this and Swag would have done this. If Days, Steel and Swag will really wait two years of their career in CS, which by the way, that's like half a career, a fucking fourth of a career. If they'll wait two years, at that point in time, that's like serving a 20-year prison sentence in your real life. Like, oh, at least I've got some of my life left. You know, like, that, you can't do a five-year, but you can't do a 10-year ban. Like, no one's going to be around at that point. You're actually just, that's like a lifetime ban. So one of the problems I have is these investigations, you can't have an investigation that takes a year. And people still be playing in the meantime. And people that, you know, even seem like they did cheat. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, these things have, I know it's hard, but they've got to sort of be wrapped up really quickly. And they they claim, you know, we're understaffed, but they're taking on like a million cases. Look, it's like they've got like, oh, I'm going to do this match fixing case over here, like tier three fucking Australia. Then they're saying, yeah, it's like, gotta, mate, what is this? You know? You got to prioritize for the right things. Now, by the way, like, I do think that there should, like, this is like one of the reasons why it's so hard to make anything work in Counter Strike when the whole whole ecosystem is so fragmented. But like, you should just have more funding so that you Agreed. could get more people, so that you could get these things sorted out. And like, it should be in everybody's interest to get these things sorted the correct way. Um, I actually, so I agree on the investigation side. I actually think like match fixing, cheating, you should just be banned for life. That's generally my view. Like, if you do any of that, just like you're just gone. Because I think people are more likely to take the risk of doing that if the ban is in lifetime and their career isn't okay. like actually completely over. So that's generally just my view on that. But I do think it's absolutely insane that I don't look. I don't. Ha I don't know anything more than what's been said publicly. I, I haven't. Even, I presumably don't even know everything that's been said by someone publicly. But like, I think it's insane that the heroic thing hasn't been closed after what Hunden said. Like whether he's biased, whether he's lying or not. But like, there needs to be some kind of resolution. While heroic is just like playing all these tournaments. That's true. Yeah, and, and Nico's playing. playing and, Nico's, yeah. and Nico's and Nico's playing for OG. Like yes. it's just unforgivable. Like these guys. Like somebody needs to decide something. Yes. If these guys are just going to continue, they're basically on death row right now, aren't they? They like don't know. Either, am I going to get banned or actually am I fine? And I've just gone through all this fucking heart here while trying. By the way, I'll give them credit. While both teams are playing very well, but like yeah, that is ridiculous. You can't have the sword of Damocles as it is hanging over you the whole time you play. Yeah. No. I mean, it's just. <laughs> And then, by the way, like, what happens if if they, like, let's say in two weeks, the investigation's out, they say, okay, like, these guys in Heroic knew, Nico knew, we banned them all. They're just gone for life. What then? What about like, the results <laughs> in the meantime? Well, yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> what, 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 what happened? Is, it's like, you just, you just can't do that. And, like, I, I do think... Uh, I mean, there's also there also is, like, a perverse incentive in, in the sense that, like, if you're ESL... You actually don't want anybody to invalidate your old results. If you're Val, sure. you don't even want anybody to do that. If yes. you're Blast, you don't want anybody. If you're just a TO, you're involved. You don't want any of that. Sure. Which is which is why it's so tough. If you're if you're that that's why actually 
the people who should be funding this, uh, much like the Players Association. Oh, um, I see where this is going. It's going to be it's unpopular. Players. Oh no! He's asked for the players to give money up. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? <laughs> oh, well, that's why. That's why it'll never happen. But I'm saying. Sure. No, I agree. Yeah, that the obvious saying, people. Like, that's why. That's, that's for that's them. Why, like they should care. Yeah. They should yes. care about their not being cheated. Yes. They should set aside like one percent of their salary, and like that should go collectively towards paying for a couple of people who look into this stuff. They are the people who should most care. If you're ESL or any other TO, not to pick on ESL, if you're any TO, yeah, yeah. it's actually not in your best interest for any cheating case to ever no, be resolved not. with somebody cheated at your yes. tournament. Never. It's better for it just to be a question mark. People talk about it. No one ever knows. You don't want that. So, like, you're not, it's actually not in your best interest to even fund any of these things because you sure. don't want that stuff to come out. You don't even necessarily want the match fixing stuff to come out. Like, you're hoping that it doesn't happen. You want yes. there to be a thing investigating so that it stops people from doing it. You don't actually want those <coughs> cases to come out. It's horrible publicity. Like, you don't want Intel reading in the news yes. or, like, any other major sponsor that there's, like, match fixing at their tournaments. You don't want any of that. So I, I just think the only people who can fund it in a way that isn't, like, conflicted is the players. Now, as you and I both know, like, they're not even paying for their association, which is why it's not doing anything. And it's going to be impossible to get them to pay, uh, regardless of, by the way, of like what percentage of salary some of these guys pay. Some of these guys play their pay their agents, which is absolutely insane. Yes. Oh, by the way, I, I totally agree on that. By the way, the only logical people who should pay are the pro players. Because think about this: every pro player that isn't cheating or match fixing, you need to get those guys out the scene. You don't want them yep. in, as you say. Every other entity actually doesn't. They want to have their head in the sand like an ostrich. Like I, I'll just very briefly just give people a really small like. I won't give the whole thing. When it was at Dreamhack Winter 2014, the infamous one where everyone, and I mean half the players, thought fucking Fnatic cheated, which is why Hellraiser's Cloud Nine. The French, it was really high tension. They all now claim, of course, oh, no, I love Flusher and that, because like, they've had two beers with him over the next three years or something, you know. So now they all deny it. Even Shock's, like, walked it all back, you know. Like, I've always said, I, as, listen, I'm very careful how I phrase this as a journalist. I don't know. I can never know Lurpus. But I think Flusher cheated. Not as I said, think that. That's actually the word that saves me. I'm allowed to say that. Now, the interesting thing about that is I actually I, tried. I don't know how you can explain those without. No, I agree. I, I tried to show. You can explain them. No, dude, this is the story. I tried to show the Valve dev. I just said, look, let's just go in with an open mind. I just want to show you a few clips. And he kept saying to me, no, no, but you don't need to because it's not possible to cheat. And I said, well, you know, that's that's not, that's a debate for another time. I just want to show you the clip. And you, I just want you as, a, you know, the dev. I want to know what you would think of it. And he goes, well, with the bot you're watching, you know, we get the mice. And I go, again... Again, that's sort of a detail, you know, like we can talk about that after if you want. I say, if we could just watch the clips. And what I realized was, I, by the way, I never got him to watch the clips. Now, instead, I stupidly got Hellspawn from DreamHack to watch it. <laughs> and he said probably the funniest thing of all time. He goes like something mad, like, if this is cheating, then me and all my friends in our gathers are cheating. <laughs> something like that. And I was like, oh, why did I waste my time with you, you fucking idiot? And then I just like had to go and like, I realized at that moment, by the way, like again, the only people, that's why I give the an anecdote, the only real people who wanted anyone banned or in trouble was the pro players who didn't cheat. It's the ones who thought, this fucker's cheating and he's beating us and he's in the best team. The TO didn't want it. The fucking dev didn't want it. Obviously, none of those orgs that had the potential cheaters in wanted. Nobody wanted it. Nobody. But I had a side question I wanted for you. Because when you went with the really hard line there, which is like, oh, anyone who cheats or match fix, lifetime ban. Here's my question for you. Would that have included Simple, who technically has an ESL wire ban in early CSGO? Is he banned for life in your world? I don't think it's cheating. I think so. I mean, this was this is based on the Navi documentary. Somebody in that the simple documentary that just recently came out and I watched and I thought it was actually very good. Um, somebody in that video said that it was like a skin changer that he used that he got banned for. Not for like wall hack. I don't know. I do true. know he did. I do uh, know later the ban was extended because he did like an evasion. He tried to go on another account yeah. or something. But the problem with that is this, right? So, I'll so, just very quickly say this. I actually like Simple, but I also like the truth Simple. He has lied every time he's talked about that. Like he claims, by the way, it's from 1.6 because obviously he knows if it's in another game, Valve just goes, that's fine. That's fine to cheat. But like well, he knows if it's in CSGO, people can ask that question, you know? I, I guess what I would say is I actually don't think. Like the the, the the devs will ne would never ever agree with this. I don't actually care if you cheat in like matchmaking. Couldn't care less. <laughs> That's <laughs> a hell of a statement, but I, I get it. I get it in a way. Like, 
I care? Like, <laughs> no, not, not who got banned back in the days for cheating in like, a plan-based game of 4 yes. a.m. against yes. a cheater, and then he got banned for life. <laughs> I mean, like, that was bad. What, yeah. Like, like what, what do I care? Like, as long as True. they don't cheat what, in games that matter, right. like, how, is it any di- how is it any different from, like, you know, playing, like, Quake with cheats? Yes. Like, I just, I just don't think it matters. So no, it's also, like, no, you're, you're kind of also on the, on the fence of, like, the Ampy one there, where it's like, look, even if he cheated, it wasn't vaguely near pro player, and he was, like, 13 or something mental, you know, like, I think in those I circumstances, think if, if maybe there is an out. I think if, if it isn't even competitive play, like, who cares? Right. It's kind of... Okay. Kind of my view. Like, like I think the, like, I think, I mean, that's one of the problems where the publisher owns the IP and they control everything. Yes. It's like they have to make it about, like, what's good for matchmaking, what's good for yes. the average player. And that's why it has to be about, like, getting banned for life, et cetera. But I actually don't think that's good for anybody else. I think, uh, like, I don't think your Steam account should matter for anything at all, except, like, I guess that's where you hold your skins. Yes. I'm like, you have your friends list. Like, it's just, should not matter. Like, who cares? Like, it's just... For all, for all I care, like, create your own account every single time you go to play. By the way, my, my hot take that I've had for years on that, that front is I actually think Valve should force everybody to use on, like, custom, custom Steam accounts. Because I think that also takes, like, some potential ways of, like, downloading stuff through there, through, like, Workshop or something. Right, like, yes. Essentially. Yes. Uh, and I think they should give every player, like, access to, like, every single skin that exists. For the the idea they haven't that, for marketing, I know it's mental in it. For, for the simple reason, this is the best marketing that exists. Yeah, of course, like, <laughs> there's going to be a bunch of players who are not going to bother spending money. And by the way, like that's going to be such a small percentage of the overall spend that it doesn't matter anyway. Yeah, yeah. Give these guys like access to whatever, at least for the majors, and like reduce the account thing by that. <laughs> I'll tell everyone just that stupid anecdote where, because obviously if people know, especially back in the day, Lopez used to just use the functionality aspect of Twitter. So when he actually flamed someone, he'd just tag them. He'd just tag them straight up in the name. So they're checking their mentions like, cool, just I'm shit then, great. Instead of like, I always purposely don't tag them because I'm like, whatever, if you don't want, listen, if you don't want the flame, just stay out, stay out of my, don't follow me and you'll be okay. So as a result, right, one of the things that made there so much tension between Nip and Tommy here was that when he was flaming Fifth Lauren, right, problem is he's tagging them all in it so they're just seeing everything and he did make one one of the most I'd say it's funny listen I'm an asshole so I think it's funny but it is one of the most fucked up jokes <laughs> which is that there was an amazing AK that like Fifth Lauren had and then your joke <laughs> was that the whole reason Forrest keeps him in the team there was a dragon so, it was the dragon yeah, there you go. right all right it's so, that, it's so that when he dies he can just pick up that skin which is like <laughs> obviously that true. it is a good joke like, I can't lie it's a, it's a straight fire joke it's a good angle I can't lie <laughs> what about this then? Okay, another problem with uh, ASIC is this, is uh, this is why you can't on the fly come up with a justice system because obviously you need to be a scale, it needs to be like appropriate to the crime and then overall it has to sort of interlock into a system that makes sense. So for example, like crazy examples in the past, I'll give you an example from American law. If you go back in time like 70 years in America, on the one hand, right, you know, you might be able to like do white collar crime and rip off like $700,000 and you might get like 10 years and you get out on good behavior after five years and then some guy gets caught with a bag of weed in the wrong southern state and he's just like lifetime in prison like four you like obviously anyone can see immediately that totally doesn't make any sense that's sort of whack there's a, a less extreme version up with ESIC, which is because they started with the coach ban, which is basically a form of cheating, and then they went to like match fixing on a low level. I don't think they thought it through because even the coach ban one I saw, dude, there was people who used it for like one round and they're getting years ban. Then there's the motherfucker from Hard Legion who used it for like map after map after map after map. And it's like the scale doesn't work because by that logic, he should be banned for like, I don't know, 60 years or something. You know what I mean? Like it's just something about that is off. Like again, you have to be very careful with that. And I, like I say, I even think you have to factor in the thing I said before, which is CS is different. Like the years aren't the same. It's not like if I ever set out one year in the NBA, right? That's not that's not, that's just a slap on the wrist. One year in CS, big deal. So, what do you think about this topic? Because again, I don't I don't know the answer, mate. But you're trying to solve sort of problems no one's ever solved before. So, I mean, I definitely thought that the scaling was bad. Um, I guess, like on the based on what I saw, like the mildest end of that was like uh, Ricardo, like the MIBR manager who there was one round where, did one round, where, yeah. where he was stuck and like he turned his mouse once and that's why he got like i think six months or like nine months or something like that that's on the mild end you like you can argue whether that's like you know like you should get something because clearly you should not be doing that but like you know that's 
six months, nine months, whatever that was. I don't remember exactly. But then on the other end, you have the people who literally clearly used it to try to win games, like cheat yes. entire games over and over and over again. And like, here's the question. How is that different than a wall hack? Yes. Let me give how you an example. How, like, how is that so, any different? So like, I forget how many maps he used it in, is, dude. No, I'll give you an example, to, just to give an analogy for the dead one. So Dead used it in one round, but Raging used it, from what I remember, at least in a couple of maps, I think. It was like, I think it was like maybe two or three maps, right? So by compared to Dead, like maybe 10 times as much, he got like, just because he also helped about the investigation, he got like a 19.58 month ban or something like that. Wait a minute, the other guy got nine months for one round. <laughs> okay, that doesn't make sense. That can't be. And then also, Gary... <laughs> The guy from the fucking Furia team, he got like five major bands. Or something. He, by the way, they're not even running majors very often. He's just got the next five. He's just done. Like, he may as well just quit being a coach at that point in time, Tommy. Like, there's no point. Like, what? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just that it, it just doesn't work. And like, it's like you said, like there needs to be some logic behind it. And when it's like when there is zero transparency as to like how any of this was said, it also does make you wonder of like what actually goes into it. Doesn't matter. Like it doesn't mean that there was like any foul play in how how these things were being said. But like you certainly like do wonder. Like it's impossible not to. Yes. Oh, another thing as well. By the way, I'll say is in a mad way. I want people don't get this. ASIC is one side. That's our competitive world. That's like FIFA saying, I'm going to ban you for a year for this, or this team's, you know, done like impropriety in the business aspect. You know, they signed a player in a dodgy way and put something like that. That's one thing. That's the competitive ban. Dude, the thing we still haven't integrated, and we're at the point now with so much money being bet on these games and so much money being paid to these players and so much riding on the line of certain qualifiers, what it means for a circuit and all the rest of it. We have to actually, for real, I know it's not going to happen yet, but we have to get the police involved. I know it sounds like a mad thing to say out loud to someone who's been a gamer. I know there was that story, the FBI is looking into this match fiction thing. Like, I don't know if that means one fucking, I don't know if that's Fox Mulder in some side office. Like, eSports is going to be big one day, guys, I promise. Like, I don't know if that's the real FBI. In the modern day, this is another thing that would definitely be like a thing that would make players think twice if you actually for real it's like it's like if you rig a football game dude you're being caught of course that you've defrauded people who've bet millions on the game you've like that's an actual crime like I know it sounds fucked but as much as these players now are like ah oh, but if I get away with it, I don't say anything. No, motherfucker, you should potentially actually be thinking, shit, I might have like a year's prepared. Like, you probably wouldn't go to jail, but you should. it should potentially be like a real life consequence, you know? Because there's the other thing that's stupid as fuck, by the way. What if I did this right at the end of my career and I was like, I'm like RPK and I'm like, I don't give a fuck, mate. I'm retired. Rizzle Dizzle. Ban me for seven years. I'll just go to real life. I might have even made money off it, by the way. What if I threw a game? Like, I've just got all that money in real life. What is that? Yeah, I mean, it's just... <laughs> And but there, there was somebody, uh, I don't remember who was Mo, actually. There was somebody in North America and Counter-Strike or Counter-Strike Source who basically just, like, cheated and said, like, oh, I wanted to quit. <laughs> just, that is a hilarious <laughs> reason, I can't lie. And, and, just, and just, like, fucked her on their final games. I think it was Mo. Somebody, somebody it sounds about comments, Mo's wheelhouse, I've got to say, you know. Some, somebody in the comments will for sure know. Oh, and somebody no, can yes. confirm. I, I think it might have been Mo. Like Corey would know if we asked Memphis, oh, he would sure. tell us. Yes, he would. He would tell us. Like somebody did that, and like people are like, "Oh, it was cheating." It was like, "Yeah, I wanted to quit." So I was like, "Fuck off." Um, I think it might have been Mo. I'm not 100 percent sure, but somebody did that. Do we have a last topic? There was something that oh, I guess um, we could maybe spend a couple of minutes talking about the grenade thing because that. Oh uh, yeah, because oh, here's the, the thing. I, one thing I want to say at the beginning is this, right? This is where every fucking idiot Zoomer just links that Homer, Abe Simpson. Like, you're just an old man yelling at clouds because you don't... By the way, they've been saying that to us since CSGO came out. Think about how fucked the gaslighting is in esports, right? When <laughs> CSGO first came out, you remember how bad it was. Like, you would do, like, AD, AD, like, running forwards. Like, everyone's using SMG. It was so bad. It was so bad. And we were just trying to tell them politely. We've just come from a brilliant version of the game. So here's some things we'd like changed. And they were like, you fucking loser. You just want it to be 1.6. Get with the time, granddad. It's a new game. It's a new era. And everyone knows that like two or three years later when they'd actually tuned the game up, it was a way better game and then no one would go back to the original version. But what I'm saying is this. What's funny is 
there's a type of like young person and loads of people in CS, the overwhelming opinion, right, except for people on Reddit, is actually like all the pros and fat that loads of them, except for the ones who are like the IGLs, are just trying to go like, look, it's change. It could bring something new to the game. Progress. Ch-. You know where people just blindly believe all progress is good, even though the question obviously is progress towards no, what? It, it, change it, towards no, what? It, you know? No, it, it's, it's really that they believe every update is progress. That's yes, the, there you that's go. That's the... That's the chain of the link, the link of the chain that's actually broken. So I feel like they're just automatically looking for the silver lining. They're trying to find how every change is good. And they, they also use the logic. You know, it's my, my most hated fucking trigger word, which is like, but the better team would just adapt. It's like, basically, it's the other way around. It's like a Darwinian filter. No one's doing any adapting. You just die. And the one who didn't die arbitrarily because he was pre-selected for one thing, he just lives. And my, my analogy is always this. Stop thinking that someone can like move sideways because very few teams can just totally change and go, actually, I have one god tier grenade user I just ha- happen to already have. Because no one can really just change immediately and adapt. My analogy is always this. Think of a cheese grater. The part of the cheese that goes through the hole didn't pick that. He's just lucky that I put the cheese grater over the other part of the cheese. That's what it's like every time you make a radical update, like the economy, the thing. Like, no one, no one's really adapting initially. Like, maybe after a year or something. And again, you've also chuck, chucked this out, by the way, right before the major. Like, right before the major. So if anyone, God forbid, f- figures out some super god tier OP shit, I'd love it. By the way, I, just to fuck Valve, I want someone to do it fanatic style. Because you know, I have a very different take than everyone else on the Olaf boost. I love that shit. I love the fact that that was in their back pocket the whole time, Lumpus, and they were like, I've, off, I've, I've awful come around. I've yeah. come around. They were like, awful shame. We're down big on T side of Overpass. Hmm, we're on CT side now. Well. Let's just pull out the most fucking broken shit of all time. Watch this. And they actually won every round and won the game off it. I remember just thinking, and then Devil Walk even did that like bullshit thing where he just almost like taunted everyone in the arena that they'd done this move. Like, that I, it, listen, I get that it's in the way. Maybe the, there's an argument. Maybe you shouldn't do it. Or you should revolt to Val. I get all that. But like the storyline is amazing. So I hope someone, if they have some super OP, just pull out in the major semis or something. Just fuck the whole tournament in the ass because you know some ridiculous shit that no one else figured out that you know, like, there's like maybe like a jump boost that you can just throw five nades and so I don't know what the fuck. What is your take over all of this? Because I haven't actually heard your thoughts at all on the, the whole grenade dropping thing and angle. So, I actually initially, when I heard about it before the release, before the update even came out, I actually thought that it would have much greater impact than it has at least so far. Obviously, like, nobody's really, really adjusted yet, I don't think. Yes. Um, uh, though, like the one half that Alexi B had was just like that's like a good example of what you could do by just like smartly allocating some of the stuff. Like w- what I suspect will happen is people will figure out certain parts of maps where you're likely to do you know thirty damage per grenade instead of two. Because um, if you, if you look at the grenade damage stats, like people talk about like oh it's the best player with nades, like they do like one kill yes. worth of damage or two kills worth of damage per game. Like it's completely yes. irrelevant. So like there's gonna be some some spots on some maps uh, where you can easily drop nades. So say like overpass A because the bomb site is right yes. in CT spawn, where like it's just gonna be impossible to go to some places, or it's gonna be really hard if they start dropping all the nades there. Um, somebody's gonna figure that out. I don't know where. Like Dust Two CT is another good example, hence why the Alexi B have. Yes. Um, so I think there's gonna be some things that will change pretty dramatically. I think it's gonna take a lot longer than. Uh, that I maybe originally thought. I think it's gonna have. I think it's gonna have to have implications on how the regular play goes, which I don't know if it's gonna be for the better. So what do I mean by that? They like one of the things that people always talk about is like the classic like Mirage A execute. Yes. Like that's what you can now fake with one or two players. Yeah. Well, you can only fake it with one or two players like throwing the grenade sequentially, right? Like yes. you can't throw all of them at once or you or you know. So how do you how do you make that fake work? You change your default execute such that you throw them a couple seconds apart. Because yes. otherwise the other team's always gonna know. And like that's gonna slow down the game. That'll be like a couple extra yep. seconds every single time. By the way, like, do you want to know what's hilarious? Everyone who's initially theory craft, I get it, none of them played the game and it was only out for like two days when we all started making our shorts. That's the problem. No one ever thinks of the second and third order effects. So here's what's happened, right? When I said, Yeah, but what if a guy, because actually there was a game where a Cillian did this, he essentially just really quickly threw all the utility he'd throw onto A and then his team executed on B. They didn't win the round, but it's like it was a cool idea. And even though it was off a little bit. 
it. In theory, it could still have been like, you know, like a team where someone just threw it the wrong timing. Then obviously everyone said, but that's the thing for him. When you see it come in staggered, you'll be able to still read the utility and know it can't be that side. No, because as you just said, that's not what... That, listen, if anyone's ever seen Carrigan T-sides, like there's about fucking eight strats that come off one base. He, he actually does like 1.6 style and he just makes the same exact smoke usage no matter what site he's going. So it'll be like that, like you say, basically. Now the joke is you'll just do a really slow, fucked up, staggered version when you are going to the A site. So again, it's actually back on my side of the court. I've now hit it to you. Now you've got to answer me. What do you do when it, now it is impossible to guess? Now they kept saying stuff like this. Again, you can see why this might or might not work. They were going, you just CT push for information. Right, well, the time that I am doing the real format here, you just get instantly shot in the head. You're one man down on the... You know what I mean? Like, this is why it's not as simple as let's just change one cool thing. It, the butterfly effect is crazy in CS if you make... As we've seen from the economy, the guns... And the and the other well the other thing that that's gonna that's gonna lead to I think is people will end up taking more chances because you can do these like crazy crazy sure. fakes and also these like crazy reads on the CT side based off of that I think the ultimate outcome will will sleep over time but what I think what's gonna happen out of it is like the variance will increase so I think results will again become just like a little bit more random because the game is a little bit less predictable yes. like there's less stuff that you can read as a player on the map because you can you can't read stuff based on where grenades are being thrown, especially on maps where, you know, like you could you could now have somebody slowly faking, taking over overpass a like long and bathrooms by themselves yes. all alone if the CTs are playing passive. And he can just yes. kind of move up close and like, you know, there's like a bunch of nades dropped in like connector or something. So like, I, I just think it's going to make things a little bit more random. Again, the results are going to be more random. Like, you're not going to actually know as well who's the better team in a single map. And the game's going to get a little bit slower because that's what teams have to do to play around it. I suspect that anything that makes the game slower is probably for the worse on average. Um, and there's going to be some <coughs> other consequences that I haven't thought about that haven't come to mind. Besides that, that'll that'll come out of that because that's how it always works. And that's going to make some current play styles unsustainable. Or it's going to make some of them worse. Like some people will just drop off because they're not going to be very good at it or not thinking about it. And like you said, I do hope and I also expect that there's going to be a couple of teams who have come up with like maybe not game breaking stuff, but at least like stuff that will like in the short term, if they haven't seen that before, will like completely confuse you and make you not understand what's going on. Like that's bound to happen. Like, yes. there's going to be some stuff, like, some games will just be swung based on that. Like, I have two problems overall with this. One is that right now, I've been crying about this for, like, I, I don't fucking know, since sometime last year when they made the change. Already, the CT economy is in fucking shambles. Like, it's in what's mad is, like, the CT economy is almost, it's almost like they get reset, but not the T's. Like, we've actually come to a nightmare scenario. It's stupider for both. So we're in this stupid scenario where anything that makes it harder for CT's ain't good for the game, because it's already really hard. They have more expensive guns. The AK is still the best gun of the rifles. It's cheaper even still than an M4 that's been reduced in price. And on top of that, the Molotov cheaper for the terrorists like you know what I mean there's so many factors that already advantage T so this is another thing I think overall would actually disadvantage CT I don't know the certain map scenarios they can use it here's another thing I'll say very quickly nobody in the world asked for this change I'll tell you a change I've even suggested and I have asked for but they didn't do this one and throw this in why can't I drop kits for my teammates CT that's a change that, by the way, doesn't break the game because it just allows at the beginning. Like, if I have 2k extra than you, why can't I just buy you a kit? That's not a game breaker. No one's yeah. taking five kits. There's no such thing, you know? By the way, spe speaking of kits, that actually is the one part we didn't touch on yet, which is the economy. Like, I've my big complaint over the last couple of years has been that the economy has become less and less important over time, which makes every round more winnable on both halves, while the guns yes. have always, also been more balanced. And like that essentially means that like now, give or take, like no round is worth more than one round. Like you might get like on in expected value terms, you might get like, you know, 1.75 rounds. Whereas like previously, like there were rounds that would just like break your money. You'd have yeah, you'd have one point two or three at least. Like, yeah. yeah, you'd basically like be completely broke for two rounds. And like that's why the the problem is people always focus on those follow-up rounds and they're like, this is not interesting. I don't want to watch it, but they've missed the point that like the round before is the round that's much more interesting than all of those rounds combined when they're just like, give or take 50 fifties or like Dude, the analogy I would so, give is this thing of NFL downs. Like the, the first downs a lot different than the fucking third down with the play you can run yeah. it, Sarah, and what it means for the game, isn't it? Yeah. 
So anyway, what's going to happen now again is like before you you had to think about like staggering money. So like there would be time when you drop a gun, even if you had like, you know, 5K, yes. your teammates had four and a half K or like you had 10K, your teammate had 5.2K just to like balance things out, whatever. Now you can always drop grenades too. So again, like it just, it just becomes like easier and easier slowly with every single one of these changes. Cause like you don't have to, now you don't have to prioritize like whether you buy a kit or a smoke or a molly if you're playing B on Inferno. Because there's going to be somebody in A who's not really going to need that, and they're going to be able to drop that too. So, like, all these things, I think, just, like, slowly make everything more interchangeable. And, like, the ultimate outcome in all of this, I think, is that, like, the only thing that matters more and more every single day as we go forward is, like, who has the best name. Because that's, like, increasingly... Like individual skill increasingly just matters more and more and more. And like unsurprisingly, as you get like 10 million people playing the game or like 20 million people playing the game, I don't know what the actual number is. Uh, like there's just going to be people who are just like significantly more talented at that one thing who are presumably not going to be very great at many of the other things. And like, again, like maybe it makes the game better overall. Some people will like it, some people don't. But like you do increasingly move to a place where the best roster would really just be like five super individually skilled players. Um, you know, I guess the coaching thing moved things back a little bit because you can't, you can't really have like a coach that has a real impact during the game anymore. But I like, I just think it makes, I don't know. I don't like when, when things become more random, when it's like harder to read things, when it's harder to plan around things, because it just becomes less strategic to me, I think. So as a result, I would rather have, it's not that I'm against change per se, but I'd like things to be predictable. I'd like somebody who's on the server when something happens to be able to like derive some some amount of knowledge out of that. Even if it's just like how many nades somebody's wasted on a bomb site, like right. who's playing where, like you know what the it, it just all these things like as more of it blurs together, it actually gets to a place where because it can be so confusing, it might actually not be worth your time to even think about any of that, which further like simplifies the game. Because it's not just that you can think it through. Maybe most of the time you can, but some of the time you can't. Yes. Maybe that offsets it enough that like you completely disregard all of it. And I think the the outcome, as said before, I think it's just like you just end up with like a more simplified, simpler game that ends up having more <coughs> randomness in results, which, you know, I. Yes, like some people at least claim to like that, but as we talked about yes. before, when the Viewership big teams never reveals it, does it? Yeah, when, <laughs> yeah. When the, when the big teams are not playing in the finals, you know, revealed preferences are different from stated preferences. Yes. Also, I will say what I don't like about that. This is the first thing I thought of when I heard this idea that like you could essentially do like a million fakes that are like crazy fakes where it looks so real. The first thing I thought was right now all the genius in game leaders who do actually cut, like, keep in their head the fucking utility of, like, right, I know they use two smokes. I think you said they had a flash there. That guy, and by the way, we're talking about the most, we're talking about the Carrigan Glaives, like, the real high-level IGLs. That was a way that they could themselves control the game. They were That gave them a strategic aspect that gives them an edge over some rookie guy, some guy who's just become an IGL this year. You know, he's just, like Nexa, he's barely done it. You know, he's done it like a year and a half or two years or something. Someone like that, he has to level up. It's like, yeah, you do your homework, fucking mate. You better get in the demos and figure out how I know this because I know it from 10 years of play, you know. That goes away, as you say, and at this point in time, I may as well just be shooting you in the head. Like, it's just we're just going to take fights because now sometimes three smokes coming in. It's like, no point rotate. Let's wait and see if we see someone on the actual site. There's one other thing I thought is a closing topic. It's going to be a switch of, of topics. I'll see what you can say about this. If it's shit, we'll just cut this part here. Here's the last topic I had. Because, I, dude, this is where, again, it's, if it's not me and Richard Lewis, who, yes, are way older and we're sort of so experienced, we're so jaded that when we see bullshit, we immediately see it. But other people just blithely let things go by. So a former player of yours, and I know obviously there might even technically be ongoing business relations with you. You'll have to address that if you want to disclaim it. Basically, there was this news that just somehow flew under the radar. It was like Valve is partnering with Fallen's company to sell stuff in Brazil. The first thing I was like is, is this real life? So an active pro player is partnering with the game developer to sell things in his region. 
That's called a conflict of interest. How can that game developer potentially have him play in their tournaments, have him potentially, like, uh, what happens if he came up for a ban or something like that? What if he had a competitive integrity in, in, um, incident of some type? I'm not saying he is for stupid people. We're talking about a hypothetical. And the problem, as I'll always stress with conflicts of interest, is it actually doesn't necessarily always matter if they will end up happening if they will be played out in a corrupt way you tend to try and avoid them so that they can't so it's not even on the table so listen i know this is a bit tenuous like i'm not actually thinking there's anything going to come from this i i just wondered what you thought of it as someone in business and thinking from a mixture of the competitive and the business side so i mean first of all i definitely think that's like one of the larger conflicts in the space i we haven't gotten like the the letters from Valve to disclose all the conflicts for this major yet. Um, so, like, you know, I, I presume that those are going to come out similar to how they came okay. out, you know, a year and a half ago before the major that was supposed yes. to take place in Rio. Um, but, like, I I don't remember, like, from the, from the last one, from all the disclosures that came out, I think that would be by far the largest. Yes. And so I have two thoughts on that. One, I... <laughs> I feel I feel like Valve don't have much of a leg to stand on to complain about like some of the other stuff just <laughs> just based on that. That's I mean the idea that. they're going to say to you, I mean, how dare you own part events? By the way, I'm just doing business with Fallen here. Like, excuse me, You're like what? Yeah, um, <laughs> I mean, like I I think that's uh, I, I think it's just it's just a bad look. And like I don't know how long Gabriel plans on playing. You know, he's like what thirty thirty one something sure. like that now. Uh, so like presumably. I would guess not that much longer, though I don't know. I haven't asked him, but like I would be surprised if he's playing two years from now. Like I don't know why you couldn't have routed that differently, waited yes. until that point. Because I do oh, think it's course, a, yeah. I do think it's a it's a bad look. But it, again, like it goes back to the uh, the thing that we talked about earlier with regards to Isaac and like cheating. So you know, hypothetically, I don't like he was he he would be one of the guys who I'd be the most surprised if he did it. But like let's say he got caught cheating. Now, and like it was like a thing where like only Valve could look at the game right. logs, whatever, figure yes. out. Like now, like that's like a real issue. Like sure. you actually want that to come out. That actually might be big enough to have some kind of impact on something. It's going to so, fuck up your shop or whatever it is that you sell yeah. it if the guy's just be found cheating. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So I think that's that's not great. Uh, probably shouldn't have happened. At the same time, like generally speaking, for many of these conflicts, I actually feel like they're mo almost entirely nothing burgers. Like there's some pieces I think that are that are pro problematic, uh, but I think some of the ones that people complain about, I just think like that have no chance of actually mattering. Uh, but I'm biased, so you know. Yeah, yeah think, of course. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm biased. All I'll say as a closing note, just on a humorous one, is I look forward to just this last part here being very poorly, maybe intentionally mistranslated into Portuguese on certain big streamers' streams, and then maybe me and you open Twitter, and then just maybe maybe that's the day you don't check the mentions, you know, you know Tommy, you, you know, know those days. You know, the funny thing is, uh, I've, I've now gotten used to, like, any single time am I You just ignore if you see Portuguese, I guarantee you. Like, yes. Just yes. like a massive spam of... Uh, yeah, yeah. Not very nice messages. Uh, and I'm hoping that like now that I no longer have any operational role with regards to MIBR, I have nothing to do with the team or even the company day to day on a day to day basis, just overseeing the parent company, basically, yes. I would hope. And now that there's a Brazilian CEO who's actually running MIBR. Oh, OK. That, uh, yeah, that was announced earlier this week. So we have a, we have a Brazilian CEO who's actually running the team. Um, oh. I would hope that uh, there's no need for these messages. And I don't think that, I don't think Brazilians will get the same messages anyway. The gringos are out. So right. know, it's not, okay. not focus on this. I'll just say, I actually got at one point where obviously, like I, I told, I've said this before, I don't understand the people who press that translate tweet button when they just, you know, it's like a shitstorm of CIS fans. Or present. It's like that translate tweet button, that's just like saying hurt my feelings. You don't know what it means right now. So I have to say, I'll fully say, I've even had a few people reach out that were like, look, I'm actually a huge fan and I was actually arguing against them hating on you. But in Portuguese, I'm like, look, unfortunately, I have to operate on that like old principle that like the inquisition used of like kill them all let god decide like if i see it in portuguese i just hit block man i don't bother i don't bother translating i just say you know what sorry but 99 percent of them are absolute trash so like in that scenario i've got to just block you all you know i'm sorry that's just the way it's gonna be the the mute mute button is a beautiful thing 
This video was kindly supported by Chris with a K, Lager15, Matt Pugnacio Dracula, Skaparan, Travis Goff, Zach Smid, Adam Oaks, Alexander Rao, Animosity, Bot Pounder 420, Chris, Eric Hillerstad, Hades, J Dobbs, Jensen Gore, John Shelton, Joseph Ginsburg, Kovacevic, Tobias Bernasconi, Zumba, Xyrathenia, and special thanks go out to both Jerky's Minion and DZL. Do you want to suggest a topic or a guest for some of my content? You want to ask me a question in one of those video AMAs? Do you want teasers? Who's going to be the guests on my next interviews? Do you want to take part in a lengthy esports discussion with me? Well, put your money where your mouth is. Join the Scaluminati today at the Patreon link in the description box below.